parade's as good as over. Yes, miss! It's not Smith's fault. So what can we do? We haven't the guns. I have a cousin in America. I've written to him to see if he can find us something. I have a brother in London. Says he can get us a revolver for ten pounds. You don't need to be writing to America or London. Ireland's full of guns. The country's practically an arsenal. Take the guns from the men that have them. We're gonna get guns. And when we get them, we're gonna use them. Like the Kilmichael men. The Kilmichael men are getting very big headed. I'm on for it. Whenever you say. Me too. Good lads. There are they? Usually they don't come out until later. You should have shot him. Holly, the farmer. Well, that wouldn't have put us in a very good light with the locals now, would it? Then what did you pull your gun out for then? Good evening. Night, gentlemen. Thank you. Call again. Slant, sir. The company parade was a fiasco. It was a disgrace. Their commanding officer is a disgrace. He's obviously unfit for the job. I know Vincent's a good soul. His granduncle was out in 67 in the Fenian Rising. Well, I hope the granduncle didn't more than march around an empty field. As a matter of fact, he shot the landlord's agent and did 15 years in an English prison for it. I propose we ambush a party of soldiers, take their weapons, train our men, and then get to work. I think, in principle, you're on the right track, but... Uh, in principle, nothing. We're doing it, and that's that. Well, no, it's not quite that simple. You see, you... Begging your pardon. You're an officer from headquarters, but you've no authority here. Now, Vincent is the O.C., you see. He, uh, he gives the orders. Gentlemen, we're going to bring this war here. To this town. To these fields. To your hotel, if we have to. What's the matter, Tom? You and me have had some toyed scrapes, Kelly, haven't we? Yeah. I mean, so far we've been lucky. But that's all it is. Luck. And luck always runs out sooner or later. Jesus, oh, too. You've picked a fine time to come over all philosophical. I just don't like the look of this one. Your man's only doing it to get in again with Ada. We're gonna have to talk to Coyne next time we see him. Tell him to throw Eater over. And let Gallagher have her and settle the mad bastard down a bit.
Secure their weapons. Clear this up. What are you two doing here? We've been waiting for you, sir, to give you this. <coughs> no one move! Fight! Put down your weapons now! Tell them! Do it! Do it! Get him in the farmhouse! Come on! Driscoll been in. You out of your mind. The company, the company of which you are supposed to be the vice commandant, Mr. O'Brien, ambushed a British down. patrol today. Oh, We're starting a warrant on Trent tonight. Joe, take him out the back and plug him if he gives you any trouble. Oh, Driscoll's my mother's second cousin! No, he's the enemy! No sign of O'Brien or the other flip? No, they're tinkering with something at the back. I suppose we'll have to help ourselves, so. Who'll join us in a drink? Ready? I insist. Take a seat, Mr. McCormick. Never known a traveller to be so shy. Maybe you're no traveller at all. Won't you come and join us, Inspector? So, what is it you have planned for this poor policeman? Ah, come on, no McCromlish. You don't fool me. You were trying to get me, McCromlish. Admit it. You're a fly one, but I'm on to you. It's the money, isn't it? The money? He's taking the rise out of me, Roddy. <sighs> Treat them mean and keep them keen. That's the way travellers work, isn't it? There's no need to be mean with me, Mr. Cumlish. I'm already keen as mustard. It is the missus. My wife does be very nervous about me. This is a quiet town, but you never know. <laughs> 